aufpassen. 20 Uhr Dienstagabend, meine sehr geehrten Damen und Herren, liebe Freunde des Weines, live im Weinkreis mit Kilian und Bernd und einem wunderbaren Rotwein von Guillaume Gilles, dem Combo Massadier. Ja, und jetzt kommen schon ganz viel online. Wow, das geht ja ab. Hallo zusammen. Hi. Ja, wir warten jetzt noch einen kleinen Moment, aber ähm, so lange, äh, bis es losgeht, vielleicht noch ein paar Hinweise, Kili? Ähm, die aktuellen Corona-Hinweise oder was für Hinweise meinst ja, du jetzt? Ja, genau, die aktuellen Corona-Hinweise, ja. Die also nichts Genaues weiß man nicht, sicherheitshalber haben wir morgen mal zu. Ja, wir wissen eigentlich, ja, müssen wir vermutlich zu haben. Leider ist die Corona-Verordnung noch nicht online. Ähm, aber wir haben erstmal zu. Wir dürfen auch leider keine Abholung anbieten in Baden-Württemberg. Also ähm, wir liefern aber in Stuttgart jeden Tag, außer Sonntag. Genau. Ähm, wenn ihr bis um 11 Uhr bestellt, äh, habt ihr die Weine noch am selben Tag. Äh, ansonsten aber spätestens am nächsten Tag. Also Leute, wir machen euch den Dienstagabend schön. Macht uns den Dezember schön und den Januar und den Februar bitte bestellt fleißig und sagt, äh, von uns kriegt er ganz schnell Wein. Ähm, und Pakete natürlich auch, ähm, da müsst ihr ein bisschen aufpassen. Unser Paketdienstleister UPS garantiert die Auslieferung bis Weihnachten ähm, bei Paketen, die bis Donnerstag eingeliefert sind. Also alles, was so bis Donnerstagmittag zu uns kommt vielleicht mittags 12, 1 Uhr, ähm, kommt auch noch pünktlich weg, ähm, kommt auch noch pünktlich an. Danach ist es ein bisschen Glückssache oder ihr müsst per Express bestellen. So, also jetzt sind schon ganz viele Leute da. Äh, müssen wir noch irgendwas sagen, Kili? Ähm, eigentlich nicht. Nee. Dann schenken wir mal ein, oder? Genau. Das haben wir uns verdient. <lacht> Combo Massadier, ein Gamay und ähm, naja, von der Rhone und auch wieder nicht von der Rhone, kommt eigentlich so vom Fuße des zentralen Massivs von Guillaume Gilles. Und die Appellation ist Gamay de la Vallée du Doux 2018. Eine Appellation, von der ich noch gar nichts wusste, bis wir den Wein ähm, vor, vor zwei Jahren war das, zwei glaube Jahren, ich. Ja. Glaub ich ja. Vor zwei Jahren das erste Mal bei Guillaume im Keller probiert hatten im Fass und das war super, da war aber schon ausverkauft ja. und der zweiten Jahrgang, den haben wir dann gekriegt. Genau, der, der 18er. Hier. Und ähm, ein ganz, ganz spezieller ähm, Gamay, der Guillaume ist nachher äh, auch mit dabei und da werden wir euch sicherlich einiges davon erzählen. Ja, wie riecht's, Kili? Mm, sehr lecker. Ja. Also ich habe ganz klar rote Kirschen im Aroma. Rote Pflaumen, so ein bisschen was Pfeffriges, grüner Pfeffer oder weißer Pfeffer. Mhm. Ja, viel Frische, so ein bisschen mhm. grün. Viel Burgund, ja. also unheimlich viel Burgund in der Nase, ähm, sehr komplex. Und also das ist ja eigentlich das, was mich so, was mich so fasziniert an diesem Gamay. Ähm, der ist so ganz anders, der ist total äh, eigenständig, ähm, er hat eben so eine Komplexität die ich sonst bei Gamay kaum kenne und ähm, ja, wir werden uns sicherlich dann, ja, vielleicht verrät uns der Guillaume, warum das so ist, aber eben auch die, diese, diese Feinheit, eine, eine große Länge, da musst du erstmal, wenn du das so blind probierst, musst du erstmal auf Gamay kommen. Ja, ja das ja. stimmt. Ja. Und der, äh, ja, auch schöne samtige Tannine natürlich, klar, wie sich das für, für Gamay gehört. Der Dienstagabend fängt echt gut an. Leute, ihr wisst gar nicht, was wir heute hier durchgemacht haben. Ähm, viel gepackt, viel bedient. Ja, ja genau. Ja. ja. So, also, ähm, ich glaube, jetzt könnten wir mal langsam den Guillaume dazu holen. Ja, vielleicht noch kurz was zur ja. geografischen ein Einordnung. Ähm, der kommt nicht weit äh, her von der Rhone. Ähm, den vorletzten Wein, den wir im Glas hatten am Dienstag. Das war der San Josef. Von da aus sind es ungefähr 10, 15 Kilometer zu dem Weinberg, Luftlinie. Wie lange man mit dem Auto braucht, weiß ich jetzt nicht. 
Mhm. Ähm, es liegt ungefähr 200 bis 300 Höhenmeter weiter oben. Das heißt, es ist nochmal frischer und die Böden sind anders. Ähm, da hat man, wenn ich es richtig im Kopf habe, äh, Sandböden auf Granit. Genau. Und jetzt hole ich mal Genau, heute müssen wir die Technik selbst machen, weil die Roxana ist heute Abend nicht da. Die guckt von zu Hause zu. Hallo Roxana. Und äh, jetzt schauen wir mal, ob der Guillaume schon da ist. Okay, der anguckt. Äh, da, über die, die Such. da ist er. Da ist er. Äh, ja, du musst ihn an, jetzt hast du ihn jetzt nicht angeklickt. Äh, Envoyer in dem Monde. Und dann, und dann, genau, da, richtig, ja. Ja, Eukalyptus in der Nase, Kati, ja, das stimmt, ja, also das ist so ähm, unheimlich komplex. Ja, da ist der Guillaume, good Kuckuck. evening, Guillaume. Good evening. <lacht> the first time we speak English in our life together. Ja, yeah. okay. <lacht> <lacht> so, uh, we're glad to have you here. And I think um, in France, um, the confinement is about to finish and uh, we are going to be con uh, confined tomorrow. So we we'll just uh, switch. Yeah. yeah. And uh, to get a happy pre-confinement, uh, we are drinking Combo Massadier tonight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Guillaume... Um, I hope you are, you're doing well. Did you have a good uh, vintage this year? Yeah, yeah yes, good vi good vintage uh, with uh, particular co uh, conditions, but uh, um, we can. All is good. All is good. <laughs> yeah. Great, um, great. Um, <clears throat> yes, Guillaume. So actually, um, the domain Guillaume Gilles. It's still a very young domain in Carnas, but uh, it's it's really it's really recognized uh, among amongst one of the best now. I can say that, and uh, I I think I we we followed your wines from the beginning. I think from 2007 or so. Yeah, but yeah. Actually, yeah. yes. But you you're very well known for your for your Syrah wines. But now this is not a Syrah, this is a Gamay. And I was very yes. surprised to find a Gamay in your cellar. And in your very small cellar, you can't even hide it because there's only very, there are only very few barrels. So um, tell us where it comes from, Vallée du Doux. Uh, nobody knows it. Uh, so uh, Vallée du Doux is just a valley um, near uh, Tournon uh, in Ardèche. It's... Uh, We can uh, we can say it's the the beginning of uh, the um, plateau Ardéchois. I don't yes. know if you know because we are um, upper in uh, in altitude uh, and uh, it's we are between uh, four uh, uh, 400 and and 500 meters uh, high. Yeah. Yes. And it's granite. Yeah, I'm granite. It's granite as well. Yeah. And how did you find the terroir? It's really uh, did you did you look for it or was it a coincidence? Uh, my it's it's a coincidence because uh, I was uh, I was living here um, uh, perhaps uh, for eight years uh, ago. Uh, my parents are living uh, yet uh, here, uh, and it was very. It, it was um, at first the first vineyard was uh, which uh, of uh, the um, grandfather of a um, friend, yes, and and his grandfather um, was uh, deceased, and uh, my friend uh, said to me, uh, if you want uh, to to have this small uh, vineyard, uh, and I said uh, why not because uh, I love Gamay and. Uh, It was a good uh, occasion to to do over uh, Zan Syrah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. So it came as a as a surprise, and uh, yeah, we told you, uh, we told everybody that uh, Valley du Doux, it's uh, near Tournon and in, in the in the mountains already, mm -hmm. 
And um, so what is so special about this Syrah? Is it old vines, maybe? You said it's from the yeah, grandfather. Uh, of so 40 years old. 40 yes. years old. Yes. Uh, but the what is uh, special is it's Gamay. Uh, it's uh, particular. I think uh, I think it's uh, a lot of Gamay Saint Romain. Uh, it's a Gamay um, that we find in Côte Rouennaise or Côte d'Auvergne, Côte du Forez. So uh, okay. it's a Gamay more um, with more structure uh, and more uh, spice characters, perhaps. Oh, so it's a different, maybe a different gamay to the gamays we found in Beaujolais. Yeah, yeah. Maybe and if I can interrupt, there was one question already from Kati, and she asked if this one is from Beaujolais because she only knows, or most people only know, gamay from Beaujolais. Um, this is not from Beaujolais, it's much more in the south. Um, as you already said, it's from the Ardèche, so southwestern France, yes. North, yes. it's a uh, North Ardesh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> North Ardesh, yes. Yes, uh, East uh, Massif Central. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very nice. So, um, yes, the Vini, uh, so the, the, the varietal could be uh, an answer to the question why does this gamay taste li like this? Because it tastes very special. It's, uh, it's really hard to, to find out that it's a gamay to me. Um, but maybe there are other reasons. Uh, the vinification, do you do the vinification like you, you do your carnass or is it different? No, it's very different. Uh, um, I was, uh, uh, my, I, I study, I was, uh, I was, uh, studying in Beaujolais. Uh, and so the, for, for this gamay, uh, it's very different for, uh, like my Syrah. Uh, it's really a, a Beaujolais vinification. Yeah. So short uh, maceration, uh, and short maceration, and no, uh, I don't know the the word in English, uh, pigeage, no pigeage. Yes, okay. also kein Unterstoßen mm. vom Tresterhut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you do a maceration carbonique? It's, uh, we call that uh, semi-carbonique. Okay. Semi -carbonic. Yes. Yeah. Also yeah. da werden die ganzen Trauben uh, ins Fass gelegt um, und dann fangen die von selbst an durch den Stoffwechsel äh, in, der, in den Zellen drin, in den ganzen Trauben, ähm, verschiedene Produkte in Alkohol umzuwandeln. Und das ist eine sehr sanfte Vergärung. Ja, genau. Und ist aber trotzdem, also im, im Unterschied zur, zur Carbonik, äh, hast du schon mehr Struktur, ne? mhm. ähm, eine schöne, schönere Tannine auch, einfach, einfach mehr Wein. Ja. Als, It's just delicious. <laughs> I really love this one. I think this would be a, this will be a short one. Mm -hmm. Could be so that would that would be a night for two bottles. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Guillaume. And um, well, this this wine wasn't always friendly with us. <laughs> We remembered when uh, when when you delivered the wines in in springtime. We opened uh, we opened it. And uh, we opened the bottle and we were quite surprised because uh, it tasted really very, very bad. <laughs> and I said, oh no, it's, it's impossible. I've chosen this. This can't be true. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yes, we talked uh, at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, it's, uh, yeah, but... Uh, It's uh, I can <laughs> I can say I I could uh, say uh, it's not it's just natural but uh, <laughs> yeah it this one can be uh, capricious uh, and but um, as a, um, one brewer from Beaujolais uh, says me uh, gamay can be capricious so yes. yeah it's a gamay and it's a gamay with no um, yeah. There is got a stability, but uh, I don't want. Uh, uh, I try to to stay natural, so uh, it can be uh, it can it can be uh, characterial. Yeah. Yes. Yes, but there's a little bit sulfur added, or there's no sulfur added. There are some uh, sulfur. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And uh, yes. So. Uh, 
yeah, I stick to that. And and you said, okay, yes, this might be. We tasted it just a few days ago, and we found this off taste as well. And the off taste was very strong. And you said, okay, we think we think it's it's a phase. Uh, you can send it back, but uh, you can also wait for a few months, and uh, we see what what happens. And uh, we tasted it uh, like uh, two months ago. Yes, and, and it was wonderful. It was just like in the barrel, and I was so surprised. I actually, I I have a lot of trust in you, but I must say I had some doubts. <laughs> but it's really astonishing, and uh, that's um, I think uh, that's a proof that uh, you have to be sometimes patient with wine. And of course, that uh, our um, yeah, well, the natural, the handcrafted wines, uh, they need some attention and they need some special care as well. So, um, so there are some questions: What makes the wine natural if some if some sulfur is added? Yes, well, that's a very uh, yeah. So we're entering in in this uh, uh, business. Uh, what is natural? What is not natural? Uh, it's yes. It, it's, for me, it's natural. Yeah, uh, the the part of nature. It's a, a natural yeast, uh, and yes, there is some sulfur, but it's the this is the, the only thing. Uh, there is no no filtering, no fining. Uh, no, no, nothing uh, over than some sulfur. Yeah. Yes, I I totally agree. <clears throat> I think um, well, it's it's um, well, we, I, I don't think that we're going to discuss all night long about the natural wine, but uh, sometimes it's really a question of belief, and uh. Well, I, we make some natural wine as well, with sulfur, without sulfur. Yes. <laughs> um, so I think uh, the m most important thing is that the wine is Tastes good. good. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's, uh, <laughs> th that's, that's the fact. And uh, if it doesn't taste good, it might be natural or not natural. If it's just not good, it's down the drain and not down the neck. <laughs> So um, there was a question: Is the wine in uh, classified in Vin de France, in table wine, or what is the classification? Uh, the classification is Vin de France. Uh, it could be, um, and it, I think it will be in um, IGP. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. IGP. Uh, I think uh, Ardèche, surely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Ja, also das war die Frage, ob der Wein als Tafelwein klassifiziert ist ähm, von einem französischen Zuschauer und ähm, der ist im Moment noch tatsächlich als Wein de France, also als Tafelwein ähm, klassifiziert, wird aber in ein paar Jahren wohl eine IGP ähm, Ardèchois, also Ardèche. Ja. Ja. So, any questions? Now it's a good moment for questioning, for asking, for asking questions. But uh, maybe we can talk as well a little bit uh, about your Kaunas wines. Yeah. And, uh, and there, is, um, there is also a little, there's a new wine, a relatively new wine, and a little bit uh, a change, Nouvelle Air. Can you talk about this wine in the vineyard? Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, Nouvelle Air um, is from, uh, it's a Kaunas, yeah, uh, from uh, Lieu Lérieux. It's um, uh, it's an area where uh, the wine uh, the the vine uh, uh, has been uh, uh, has never been yeah uh, before uh, before me <laughs> because uh, it's uh, on the top of the slope in Cornas we are uh, in four uh, four hundred uh, meters uh, high in altitude oh, wow. yeah so. Usually, Cornas, traditional Cornas, like Chaillot, um, Terroir as a Renard, a Patou, are between uh, 100 and 300 meters high uh, for a long time, <laughs> for, uh, for, for deca <laughs> decades and centuries. It's just uh, Champagne de Pouillon qui, qui nous rejoint. Uh, so uh, we, I have the Champagne de Pouillon vest. Because I I forgot to uh, to put the heating on tonight, <laughs> it keeps me warm. 
<laughs> Sorry, excuse me. <laughs> no, no, nothing. Uh, so yes, it's a new cuvee and uh, so young, young vines, but uh, for me very um, promising. Uh, and it's yes, no, no, it's only the six six cuvee, uh, six vintage, but uh, it's yet uh, for me. Um, a big uh, wine, yeah. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> that's I, I like it very, very much as well. And uh, I think, uh, well, that's that's an effect of climate change because, uh, well, you were also lucky that uh, that people classified this terroir in uh, in Cornas because yeah. there was n there never was some some vineyard there. So, uh, yeah, but... But now it's a big advantage to be high on the on the hill to have a very much more elegant wine. Yeah, but because it's the same terroir, it's granite. It's the same granite uh, the, that uh, you you can find in Chaillot. It, uh, it, it can be different, but uh, it's granite too. So it's it's the soil of Cornas. But uh, before uh, before the two thousand uh, years. Uh, the climate was too too fresh, <laughs> and no, <laughs> it's a very good climate for mm -hmm. for this terroir. Yeah. Do you sometimes have problems with uh, the Mistral? Um, maybe when no, no, no. Yes, the, the Mistral. Uh, all the all the winds uh, are, um, uh, are are in uh, Lirieux, but uh, it's not a problem. It's um, yeah, it's it's more a good thing for for me yeah because okay. uh, we can have a, a good um, sanitary condition yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes yeah yeah vielleicht kurz auf deutsch ähm, mistral das ist ein wind der im rundtal wird und der kann sehr sehr stark werden was teilweise probleme gibt mit ähm, beschädigung von pflanzen ähm, in dem Fall ist es jetzt aber eher ein Vorteil bei ihm, weil äh, das die Trauben oder die äh, Weinberge schnell abtrocknet und dadurch weniger Pilzdruck herrscht. Ja. Genau. Ja. ja. <lacht> so yes, and we had some some comments. Uh, okay, uh, there's somebody uh, asking if they should. Uh, Uh, keep the wine a little bit, little bit longer in the cellar. Does it? Uh, do you have a profit of keeping it? Does it develop uh, more, or is it? Uh, is this a wine to be drunk young? So, um, so we, uh, which uh, which wine? <laughs> which, uh, we were talk I think we are talking about the Combo Masabia. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know because. Uh, For me, it's really, my first vintage was uh, 2011. Uh, at first, uh, I wanted to do uh, a, a good uh, fruit juice uh, wine, <laughs> yeah, only. Uh, and my, uh, but uh, in reality, uh, no, I see that it's uh, a little bit more, a little bit yes. more because. Uh, It's got more structures than a uh, simple gamay, I think. Yes. Uh, so I don't know. Uh, the only thing I can say, uh, perhaps two months ago, uh, I tasted my first my first vintage in uh, this cuvee, uh, 2011, and it was very very good, very fresh, uh, uh, and it can it uh, it can go. Uh, It can go uh, more, more. Uh, with it. So, so it's only uh, I can do. Yes. I can, I can say. Yes, yes, but I think uh, you know, taste-wise, as you said, there's uh, Kilian, magst du noch einen Schluck? Natürlich. Das evaporiert. You know, the wine is evaporating. It's it's incredible. I don't know. There's something wrong with the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the neck is too large, or I don't know. So uh, that's really a problem with this wine. <laughs> uh, there, were, there were two comments mm -hmm. um, about the development in the glass and that they really like how the wine changes with every sip they take. Yes, I think, uh, but I think that's that's a sign as well with um, 
with the structure of the wine, uh, with its, it has a nice concentration as well. It's not, uh, it has how much alcohol? 13 and a half, okay. It's, it's not alcoholic, but it's concentrated. It has a really good, good structure. And um, yes, there's some pate, some pate missing now. <laughs> and um, but I think uh, I think it will keep, and I I, I am sure that uh, it will not only keep. I'm sure that it will develop some some more finesse over the years. Maybe uh, <clears throat> maybe ten years or so. I, I would be afraid to put it into the cellar for ten years. Marion is asking. Uh, is it 100% gummy? Um, I think. <laughs> I think because uh, uh, I know uh, there are um, between 10 and, and 20 uh, plants of Syrah in, uh, in the vine. Okay. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's not significant. Uh, yes. Uh, but no, it's... It's gamay, yes. Yeah, I'm. I was not. Uh, I have not planted the vineyard, so I can say. But uh, yeah, for me, it's a uh, one hundred percent gamay here. Yes. So Guillaume, how uh, how big is uh, which surface of vineyards do you do you work on? How big is your domain? Uh, my domain uh, total. Yes. Yeah, it's um, about uh, uh, five hectares. Five hectares, so very small. And uh, and combo massadier is how much? Yeah, it's only uh, three thousand uh, meters. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's very small. But yes. But I will uh, I will develop the the surface uh, this uh, next year. Um, uh, I will plant uh, two thousand meters uh, more. Okay. Uh, yeah. In and, combo uh, massadier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And surely, uh, surely, two thousand more, uh, perhaps in two two thousand twenty-two. I think too. Yeah. Wow. So you're going to be grand vigneron. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, so, but you where need, do you? <laughs> you need a new cellar. Sorry. You need a new cellar. Uh, yeah. Uh, the project uh, is. Uh, is in uh, en cours. <laughs> is, okay. uh, say, yeah. yes. uh, I'm waiting for the um, mm -hmm. the build uh, permit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I'm just waiting that. And if all is good, next year uh, the the work uh, begin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But it's a pity because your your small cellar it's so beautiful. That's true. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. I know. I know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but so, uh, I need uh, I need more uh, space uh, yes, yes. and um, and I need better conditions. Um, uh, the, my new cellar will be uh, in Lerieu, inside the vineyards. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. That's that's yeah. beautiful. But I must say that your your small cellar, it's a place. It's like the cellar of Clos Rougeard, the, the the old one. Uh, the original one it's a place where you f forget all the time you know you you, you 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 get into this place and time is not important anymore so <laughs> so i hope that it will be the same in the new cellar yeah yeah i think <laughs> i hope <laughs> there are two questions um the first one is what or who did you uh, did get you into making wines? So how did it start? Uh, how? Ah, yeah. So uh, I start because uh, my grandfather was a wine grower uh, in Cornas, uh, but it was not uh, his uh, his main activity. But uh, he, he makes uh, he made some some wine, some Cornas, uh, and. And when I was a child, uh, since my uh, year uh, eight years old, uh, it was my Heidi. <laughs> uh, but after I was uh, uh, I was in Lyon, uh, so after I uh, I lost this Heidi uh, 
between my uh, 16 and 20 uh, years. <laughs> uh, and I go back in Cornas in 2000 mm -hmm. uh, by Robert Michel. Yes. Uh, and I think uh, it's, it's a ready start, yeah. Yes, yes. And with Robert Michel, uh, yes, you worked with... Uh with a very famous, uh, iconic uh, uh, vigneron. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of the old guard. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And yes, very then, nice guy as well. The next question, uh, it was how... No, do you work with old and young wines? I think yes, because you said that you planted uh, Nouvelle Air. And also, uh, what kind of trellising do you use? Uh, sorry, I, the, what, what sort uh, of trellising? La conduite, la oui. conduite, la vigne. Ah, okay, so it's in uh, Goblet. Okay. <laughs> Goblet with, with Echala, yeah. Yeah, also it's ja hauptsächlich der, der Goblet-Schnitt, also der Becher-Schnitt uh, mit den mit den ganz kurzen mehreren Schenkeln der, der Rebe, wo dann die uh, wo dann die, die Triebe hochgebunden werden an, äh, an solche Stickel, die, äh, das ist also eine Einzelstockerziehung im Prinzip, also keine, keine Drahtrahmen. Und äh, da war, warte mal, vorhin, es ging nochmal darum, ah ja, genau, how many, how many bottles of this vintage did you produce, or how many bottles of Combo Massadier do you produce? Uh, Combo Massadier, at this time, uh, only uh, Uh, 1,500 uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we but, have 10% uh, of the production. <laughs> <laughs> the, the actual potential is uh, the double. It's three uh, three thousand bottles, uh, and uh, I think with my new plantation, uh, I will uh, I will arrive with uh, perhaps five. Uh, 5,000 bottles, yeah, mm -hmm. maximum. Mm -hmm. So that's a very small production. And now, yeah. in general, uh, how many how many bottles do you produce overall on the domain, on the five hectares? Ah, uh, around uh, my maximum production could be <laughs> could be uh, 20, uh, thousand bottles, oh. uh, but uh, but in reality. Uh, Uh, for the moment, it's uh, less than uh, 15,000 uh, bottles. Yeah. Less than 15,000 bottles on five hectares. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's... Yeah, because... Yeah, that's there's not a, much. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, young vines. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and the young vines planted uh, are uh, a lot of uh, massal selections. Yes. So it needs a lot, a lot of time to 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 produce. Yeah. Yes. But you also have because that that's a, the, that's what uh, uh, what I missed then uh, when Kilian said about when Kilian talked about uh, young vines and old vines and uh, you have a very 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 interesting very old vineyard which is classified Coturon. Yeah. Les Pérouses, yes. Uh, yes. It's so 100% Syrah, I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Because uh, uh, the vineyard was uh, planted, was grafted. It was the first um, uh, vineyard grafted uh, in, in the eight, uh, 1870s. So wow. just uh, wow. during, it was during Phylloxera, yeah. So uh, 150 years old. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. And it gives a very special one. Yeah, you know, uh, it's very different than Cornas uh, because there is no granite. Uh, there is uh, clay, sand, and limestone. Uh, no, sorry, no limestone. Clay, sand, and um, Galia Roulet. <laughs> yes, yes, mm -hmm. the, the Ron, the Ron Kiesel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it give a uh, a very powerful uh, syrah, but very uh, gourmand, gourmand too. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, because uh, and, and it's it's my more uh, more powerful uh, cuvee. Yeah, more yes. than Cornas. 
Yes, it's fantastic. It's one of the most expensive Côte du Rhône I ever, I ever had, but um, it ranges very, very high. Yeah, it has actually, uh, quality-wise, it has nothing to do with the Côte du Rhône. It's just the appellation. But it's yeah. on the... Um, uh, it's, it's, it's within the village of Connas, isn't it? But in, in the, on, not on the slope, but in the plain of Connas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and no, no granite, so it's not Connas. Yeah. Also, vielleicht noch mal kurz uh, auf Deutsch, weil das war jetzt schon sehr spezifisch. Also, der Guillaume hat eben diesen alten Weinberg, uh, der uh, 1870 oder so hat er gesagt, uh, damals gepflanzt wurde. Uh, also, unglaublich. Der Weinberg ist also 150 Jahre alt. Ähm, ist ein reines Syrah, äh, Côte du Rhône, aber der liegt eben in der, in der flachen Zone äh, beim Dorf Cornas, ähm, wo es ähm, Lehmböden gibt ähm, und diesen, diesen großen Rhônkiesel, diese Galerie Roulet, also das ist einfach ein anderes Terroir als Cornas, wo verpflichtend eben tatsächlich das richtig äh, granitmäßig sein muss. Das ist so ein, so ein Granitsand, auch ganz locker immer. Und dort unten ist eben so ein, so ein Lehmboden. Aber es ist eine unglaubliche Syrah, ist ein unglaublicher Wein. Es ist einer der teuersten Côte du Rhône, die ich kenne, aber sicherlich wahrscheinlich der beste. Konkurriert mit den besten Côte du Rhônes von Jamais. Du hast eine Kompetition zwischen your Côte du Rhône und Côte du Rhône Jamais. <lacht> okay. <lacht> Which is not too bad, I think. <laughs> yeah. Questions? Questions to go? Actually, we don't need questions. We only need wine. That's true. It's, it's true. We could, we could stop here. <laughs> You're not drinking, Guillaume. <laughs> Sorry? You are not drinking. Why? No, 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 no. I'm in, uh, <laughs> I'm in office uh, to, <laughs> tonight. Oh. Yes, we're very professional. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, yeah. it's where uh, tonight so, uh, we really need, need our glass of wine. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. That's true. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, What's on for Christmas? What are you going to drink for Christmas, Eve? Which wine? <laughs> uh, I'm drinking um, always uh, uh, a 10 years old uh, vintage. So uh, it's, uh, it will be uh, 2010 uh, of different cuvées. Uh, My mine, uh, but uh, overs too. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know really. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay. Exactly. Okay. So there was a there's a question of Kati. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She asks why are we talking about Syrah and not about Gamay? Because we are having uh, Gamay, and what is the connection? <laughs> it's, 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 I have. Uh, I think I have the answer. We are already dreaming of the next bottle. <laughs> Maybe yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got yes, another sorry. question, maybe. Um, are there a lot of producers in uh, Valais du Doux, or are you um, one of the only ones? No, not, a, not a lot. Uh, the, the pioneer, the, the first uh, is uh, Domaine Romano d'Estesay, uh, Hervé Souveau, uh, which, uh, which is here uh, for... Uh, I don't know for a long, long time, but uh, in okay. these last uh, five years, uh, a lot of new and young um, vignerons uh, are uh, arriving, uh, and it's a very a dynamic uh, sector, uh, dynamic uh, okay. vineyard. Yeah. Uh, okay. Björn asks a very good question. Um, When is the best season to visit you? <laughs> uh, the best season to visit, uh, I don't know for <laughs> if it's for the, um, the landscape, I don't know, uh, every time. For me, uh, when I have got uh, more time, it's, it's no, it's, uh, 
during uh, last the, the the end of autumn and uh, a big and winter. Yeah, so it's yes. November, December. Yeah. Yes, and and uh, yes, and Bjorn wants to do a press trip with Marion, and. <laughs> So yes, two journalists who join us, who are following us, two friends, and uh, I can say to both of them, Bjorn, I know a hotel that you would love. I don't know if anybody else would love the hotel, which is uh, how's it called? It's like in a Hollywood movie, um, uh, La Batida de Coco. You know, <laughs> it's called La Batida or La Batida de, Goku, de Coco. It's oh, it looks nice. like a it's really motor. Yes, yes, it looks like in a Hitchcock film. And but there is a fantastic restaurant, uh, L'Auberge Monet, not oh. very far from you. Um, no. So everything you need is there. <laughs> so Marion <laughs> and the Bjorn, we have a date. We have a deal. <laughs> so uh, there's somebody asking, is 2018 already sold out? No, we still have bottles to sell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So you still can, can order these fantastic wines. And yes, and Gerhard Retter <laughs> is going to join us too. Yes, we're going to have a fun time. Guillaume, you have a problem now. You have uh, some very nasty Germans on your back. No time for pruning. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, the, I think the, co the connection is interrupted. Now we're back again. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we could actually, we could do that. That's a good, it's a good group. It's a good mm -hmm. group. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we could, we could also see some, some other guys around very close. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like uh, Fabrice Ripin and uh, David Renault. Yeah, so, that be funny. Uh, could be lots of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. When we can travel, we don't know. But we will. <laughs> Hopefully soon. Yes. Ah, so fantastic. Um, thank you very much for this wine, Guillaume. It's so, uh, it's... It's the best wine and evening pairing we had so far, I must say. It's so just, <clears throat> yet sometimes you just need a good wine, not sophisticated, just fruity good, well, with some complexity, with some structure, with some body, with some body. but on a night like this, after a day like this, after all this craze, it's just a treat. Thank you. Mm. Cheers. And you see, we're closing. We're near the end. The bottle is empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. What yes. a treat. Yes. By the way, we had some now today, our um, sardines and mackerels arriving from, from Portugal. From finally. La Gondola. Yeah, finally, like with three weeks of delay. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I think, yeah, that would be great wine with, with that. Mm -hmm. We tasted them. They're really extra delicious. Yes. Yeah. So I think if there are no more questions, uh, um, we have to, to take appointment with Marion and... Uh, and Gerhard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gerhard. And with you and with the other guys. So, um, yeah, and with the guys from uh, <clears throat> from Auberge Monet. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I think they, they have to put up some beds for us because their wine list is so good. It's and the incredible. Food, of, of course, as well. So, whenever you're going to the south of France from Germany, it's a good stop um, in La Roche de Glan. Uh, fantastic restaurants, not too far away from the uh, from the autoroute. And uh, voila, uh, il faut pas. Well, we we don't we don't we don't forget the French. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, c'est Maeva. Ah, c'est Ma Maeva. Coucou, ah, oui. comment ça va? So she she must come from Paris. Yes. Yes. Yeah, That's not I, too far. I, I think Maeva. Oh. She's she's about to copy our selection. <laughs> <laughs> this this doesn't come cheap. <laughs> yes, Guillaume. I think uh, 
we're about to uh, yes this discussion is going away um, it's like a, a pub a pub style now <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't we are not allowed to go to the pub now so <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah I think that was that was really fantastic uh, <laughs> yeah my Eva my Eva she's uh, she's uh, She's considering now that it is going to be expensive, but she, you're going to be with us, Maeva. It will be a pleasure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I thank you very much for being with us for this no. wonderful wine. And everybody, yes, we know um, Guillaume's wines uh, are maybe not on everybody's hot list. But many of our wines are not on the hot list for a few years, and then suddenly they pop up, they appear. So I can strongly, I can strongly recommend everybody taste Guillaume's wines, uh, not only the Combo Massadière. Uh, make an effort, taste the the Cornas, uh, and also the Coturon. Yes, you won't regret it, and uh, I think the really one. There are really some of the very, very best wines of the sector. It's very, uh, <clears throat> it's very difficult to say this because there was Frank Balthazar who uh, who watched uh, the the the, uh, the live streaming. Maybe he's still with us. Merci, Frank, uh, because he's really, really, really a great vigneron, just two two uh, two doors away from you. And so it's, uh, there are many of them, but uh, I think uh, it's really worthwhile to discover uh, Guillaume's wines. So, I think everything is said. <laughs> Your glass is still really full because you talk too much. Yeah. Also, I don't know what to say next. <laughs> oh, uh, next week it would be cool if everybody joins as well. There will be a nice sparkling ah, wine. <laughs> Frank, Frank is still with us. Wow, great. Thank you, Frank. Cheers to you. <laughs> yes. I think Frank, well, I, I don't know who sells you wines. I think Vini Sud in, in Germany, very, very good colleague. I think so. I'm not sure, but he will, he will tell us. He will tell us. Um, yeah. Next week? Next week, a uh, nice sparkling wine. Uh, it will be... Uh, Riesling Brut 32 von Frank John. Um, weißt du, wer da mit live kommt? I don't know if it's Frank or, or somebody else or Dorothea or somebody else from, from the family. Um, but uh, we will see. And uh, so we will sparkle through next <laughs> yes. Tuesday night. <laughs> And uh, yes, And of course, everybody is invited to watch uh, this video on YouTube, on IGTV, um, and uh, see you next Tuesday. And we're still here for you. Uh, we send, we bring wine, and I think uh, I'm going to be like a Santa Claus because uh, <laughs> I'm one of the few to have a driving license in this company. Isn't it so, Kilian? I don't know, maybe. Yes. Uh, so uh, you might have a slight chance to be delivered by the boss. You have to be lucky that everything's all right then. And uh, see you next Tuesday. And please support locals, for example, Weinhandlung Preis. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Thank you, Guillaume. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, my microphone. Das ist so.